I've had rather a drastic haircut recently. Something to do with a head wound, but nothing to worry about. The roles of Samson and Delilah are somewhat reversed in our household during lockdown. On the subject of haircuts, it reminds me of the young boy who had just passed his driving test. He asked his father, who was a vicar, if he could use the family car. His dad said, I'll make a deal with you, son. You work hard and bring your school grades up, study your Bible a little and get your hair cut and we'll talk about it later regarding the car. After about a month, the boy came back and again asked his father if they could discuss the use of the car. His dad said, son, I'm impressed that you have improved your grades. You studied your Bible diligently, but you didn't get your hair cut. The young man waited a moment and replied, well, dad, I've been thinking about that. You know, Samson had long hair. Moses had long hair. Noah had long hair and even Jesus had long hair. To which his father interrupted, yes. And have you noticed that they walked everywhere they went? Well, it's a feature of Jesus and his disciples' ministry, isn't it? That they walked everywhere. And in today's reading from Luke's gospel set after Jesus' death, we see two of the disciples walking to the village of Emmaus, some seven miles from Jerusalem, to the house where they were staying. They're joined by what transpires to be the risen Christ, and it's left to our imagination what the resurrected Christ was like pre-ascension, because they don't recognise him. Luke, in his typically human style, says, their eyes were kept from recognising him. And Jesus, in this form, as he walks beside them, does four significant things. He listens to them. He listens to their angst. Secondly, he opens the scriptures to them in the light of their situation. Then, on entering the house... He takes, blesses and breaks bread. And it's here Luke tells us that finally the disciples' eyes are opened and they recognised him just before he vanished. And fourthly and finally, he renewed their spirit. Were our hearts not burning within us, they recalled. These four elements, I suggest, are the four stages of our communion service in church. Firstly, we gather. We arrive as a collective of individuals with our own situations. We offer ourselves in preparation, confession, praise. God listens. Then we hear the scriptures. We interpret them. We share in the Eucharist. Bread is blessed, broken and shared in the sacrament. And finally, we are renewed. In the power of the Spirit, we are sent out into the world. And so, as the risen Christ did on the Emmaus Road, God does. He gathers us as we are. He offers his word into our lived existence. He's with us in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of the spirit, he changes and renews us to be the light of the world. Alas, as we all know, at the moment, we're not able to enter our church or to share physically together in that sacrament. If you have a copy or can look on the internet, in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer, it says that where there is a contagious time of sickness or disease, and where, and I quote, 
it is impossible to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. An act of spiritual communion can be made by any believer. God listens to us where we are. He's revealed in his word, in his sacrament, and gives us the power of his spirit. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I humbly pray thee that thou wouldst come spiritually to my soul. Come, Lord Jesus, come and cleanse me, heal me, strengthen me, and unite me to thyself, now and forevermore. Amen.